Hey, welcome, I'm Matt Bergman. So I want to share with you seven tips for unpacking academic standards with artificial intelligence. So why would you want to do that? Well, clarity is one of the best things that we could possibly do to enhance student performance. When we're clear on our expectations, our goals, and our standards, we can help improve student performance. So let's talk about some ways that we could use artificial intelligence to do that. Now, first of all, we could break a standard into key components. And in this particular example right here, I'm taking an academic standard and I'm saying, hey, break it down into main ideas, skills, and concepts. I'm gonna go over to one of my favorite tools, Gemini here, and Gemini is Google's artificial intelligence tool, uh, which is very much like ChatGPT. And as you can see, it's gonna break this down into key concepts that students are going to need to know. Now, a, another helpful tool that you may wanna consider using uh, is Magic School. Magic School AI is a helpful tool, and it also has a standards unpacker where you can go ahead and put a grade level and then an academic standard and then any other additional information that you'd like. To show you how it works, I'm gonna give you this exemplar right here, which is a ninth grade social studies ex example. And you can see it breaks it down by key components, expectations, learning targets, even assessment strategies, and a summary. Now the free version of Magic School allows you to only just interact with it one time like this, and it may be limited. So what you could possibly do is use another tool like Gemini, Copilot, or even Chat GPT to do the exact same thing. So taking that same exact question and throwing it in Chat GPT, you might notice some differences. So that's something else to take into consideration when you're going through and you're breaking down academic standards. As you can see right here, it's gonna break down it for main ideas, key skills, and even concepts. And it will even, sometimes it'll even give you some additional uh, tools and resources to check, it, check out. All right, let's share with you another idea that you could possibly integrate. And that would be paying attention to action words like apply and analyze and even create. Uh, this is gonna indicate the level of thinking that you're expecting from students. So if I go right here and I say, okay, look, how could I actually up, um, apply, students apply their knowledge of fraction multiplication in a real world context, it's going to give me some helpful examples. So sometimes students will ask, well, why? Where are we ever gonna need to know this? This is a great way of help clarifying that and giving the student the reason why this concept may help them further down the road. Another tool, another idea is this um, think, understanding what type of academic standard is. So generally there's two flavors of academic standards. It's a little bit more complex than that, but let's just say for instance, we're gonna simplify things. Content standards are standards that you're gonna see verbs like describe, explain, paraphrase. This allows you to measure knowledge and that knowledge, um, there's flexible ways of doing it. So in this particular example, we might be able to create a PowerPoint presentation as an assessment, a paper, even a video. But then you have method standards, which are specific skills that students need to know. And you're gonna hear words like calculate and write and draw and even measure. You might not have as much flexibility in what's produced, but you could have flexibility in the process of what's produced. So are there options for solving a math problem digitally or on graphing paper? Writing an essay, do you have the ability to use text to, or speech to text tools or even a template? So things like that are, are helpful. So tip number three is determining what knowledge students must already know uh, to have met this, meet the standard. So let's think about this. What prior knowledge would a fifth grader have to have to successfully meet an, this academic standard? I'm gonna jump over to Microsoft's tool and that is Copilot. And so Copilot does the same thing as ChatGPT uh, and also um, Google. It has some other bells and whistles on it as well, but it shares with you in this particular example that when students were going through school in K through four, they had some basic multiplication and division, understanding addition and subtraction of fractions. You could even break this down further and say, well, tell me what they did in, by each grade, okay? And it's going to break things down for you there. All right, hey, so tip number four, assessment ideas. So once you have a clear understanding of what's expected for students, well, how could you actually assess it? 
So imagine that I'm a fifth grade student or teacher with a diverse group of learners and I'm looking for some innovative uh, assessment ideas to meet their varying needs. Well, I could simply go into a tool like Gemini right here and I'm gonna go ahead and post this and what it will do is it will give me some different things that I could consider to meet the needs of my diverse students. If I want the tool to build the assessment for me, or perhaps I have an existing assessment that might need revamped, this could help you do that. Follow the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule means that AI would be do maybe 80% of the work, but you do the 20% of finessing and organizing and adding your specific content to this so that, well, it is customized to your needs. All right, hey, let's go with step five, success criteria. When students know what's expected of them and they know how it'll look when they're successful, that's a big, big difference in the classroom. So I'm gonna say, hey, generate an example of five different success criteria that students are gonna to need to master, but begin it with an I statement. So let's go over to ChatGPT and let's ask it to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. And as you can see right here, it's going to give me that success criteria. And this is a great way to maybe have a checklist, uh, self-evaluation and a reflection tool to help students and even keep posting it in your classroom to keep students focused on the learning goal. All right, let's go to the next step right here. And so that would be, hey, step, step number six, tip number six, I should say, scaffolds and supports. Sometimes what we need to do to create a more inclusive classroom is to, well, think about scaffolds and supports that might be needed for students with learning disabilities or even students who are multilingual. You know, there's all sorts of different things to consider. So what if I went into um, Gemini again and I were to say, hey, you know what? Um, I have several multilingual students and uh, some students with learning disabilities in my classroom. Uh, what additional scaffolds and supports might I need to help them access this content? And what it's going to give me is it's going to give me some different types of tools and resources that I might need. Now, when I do the same exact question in, say, Copilot, okay, one of the, the really neat things about Copilot is that I could actually ask it to research some different tools for me. So I could say, hey, give me uh, some examples of um, manipulatives. and uh, for this topic. And so what it'll then do is it'll go ahead and give me the, these topics. And every once in a while, what you're going to also have is you're going to have, um, can you give me a website with this? So here, here you go. It's going to give you some actual websites that you can use. So that's one of the really neat things about some of the artificial intelligence tools that you're seeing from Google, from Microsoft. It's giving you opportunity to even conduct a search and give you those different uh, resources right there that are vetted through the AI. All right, let's go to the last one, and that is to build a summative assessment for learning. You want to measure what students are learning. So there's a there's an analogy to think like a doctor. So as you are giving instruction and as you are assessing students throughout uh, a unit, uh, you might check for, um, you might actually build in opportunities for learning um, and that would be a formative assessment. But when you're trying to measure what students know, it's an assessment of learning, right? So those checks for learning are those little formative assessments that allow you to make adjustments, but a an understanding of learning is a summative assessment, maybe that end of chapter or end of unit type of assessment. All right, so let's give you this. So let's say, let's, let's ask ChatGPT to build an idea. I wanna build an assessment, a summative assessment that's going to give three different options. I want one that's project-based, second a traditional test, and third is a video. And this is what it's gonna do. It's actually going to go ahead and generate this particular content right here. So this is really helpful. It's gonna give instructions. It's gonna um, help you uh, do what you need to do. Now, the other thing to consider with AI is that you can also fine tune this. So if you don't like the instructions, if you wanna tell it to get rid of success criteria, if you wanna say, put this in a table, 
you can have it put in a table and it will actually put it in a table for you uh, so that it's organized maybe the way that you want it to be. And that's a big, big, um, big, big help. So it's going to go ahead and put this in a table for me, as you can see, boom. So that might be something to consider. Another object or another idea that you could possibly do as well is you could say, hey, build me a rubric. And, uh, and you can just say on uh, to meet the following academic standard. And so you can be much more specific than this. And so it's going to ask you, hey, what exactly are you looking for here? Okay, let's go back to ChatGPT. And let's say, hey, can you build a grading rubric to, um, to grade all three projects? And what it will do is it will actually build you a grading rubric to do exactly this. So that's, once again, a very helpful tool, a helpful measure. So let's just review what we just talked about. So we said, hey, look, you know, academic standards, very important to understand. And so breaking them into key components like main ideas, skills, and concepts, really important. We shared with you a couple different tools. We said, you know what, Magic School is a great tool, Gemini, ChatGPT, and also Microsoft Copilot. We said, hey, Pay attention to the words that you're using because it tells you not only the type of academic standard that it is, but also um, how much flexibility you can offer. We said, hey, you know what? Look at um, what students might have already known. Look for ideas for assessments. Look for opportunities to say, hey, this is what it looks like to be successful. Build in scaffolds and supports. And finally, build that assessment of learning as well as build assessments for learning along the way. So hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, hey, like the video uh, or share this on social media. Love to, love to hear your feedback.